Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. We're talking about projectile motion, and I'd like to show you a little tool that can be quite useful in studying projectile motion. It's a little flashing LED, and it's driven by a 555 timer chip, and it flashes at about 10 hertz or 10 flashes a second. Now this can be used if you throw it up. You can actually see the path of the projectile itself. And this is especially effective if you do it with a light off. So I'm throwing it into the air. Right, and I hope you that you could see how the projectile traces out a path in the air and you can see the little flashes as it flies through the air. I've taken a still photograph of this flashing light flying through the air with a time exposure of a couple of seconds and you can actually see these here. I reversed the the photograph so it's not used too much time. Here are the actual flashes. Here it was held and thrown and here is the trajectory of the flashing object through the air. And you can see here it was held and then it flashes, then it switches off, flashes, switch it off. And this is very very useful for studying projectile motion. Especially the symmetry aspects and I'll, I'll talk about this a little more later on. Right, let's analyze this graph. Remember how we captured it? We took this flashing LED, we threw it up in the air, we had a camera which was set with the shutter fully open, we threw it up in the dark, and each of these dark spots here represents the, the flashing of this light. Now the first thing that's of interest to this photograph is the following. What do you notice about the symmetry? Let's just draw a line here. A line along the bottom. And we could also draw a line exactly through the middle. Now just look at that symmetry. Here was the object going up, here was the object coming down. Do you, do you notice this is where we started? I know we, this is where it started because here's where I held the flashing light before I threw it. But you couldn't tell the difference whether that's the start or that's the finish. So that's the first thing of note, that when an object is thrown into the air, the path which the projectile describes, or its trajectory, is the same going up as down. So there's a symmetry. Up, the symmetry going upwards is the same as the symmetry going downwards. And just as another point of interest, this would make a perfect displacement time graph. If we put time here in seconds, and we put displacement, uh, which is delta y, here, and we had an axis, you would find that this is a perfect displacement time graph. And so that is what a displacement time graph is. If up is positive, you find that it's going up, 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 and then eventually it comes to exactly the same spot where it started after it has reached its zenith and then it's come down again. But now there's a few things of also of interest here. I want you to notice that each flash lasts for um, 0.005 seconds. So that each flash and its off period lasts for 0.1 of a second. That gives us a frequency. Apparently we worked it out as 
10 hertz, 10 flashes per second. But uh, one thing to notice is if you put a pencil along each of the flashes, the thickness of the pencil is always the same for if we hold the pencil vertically. Now that sounds a minor thing, but what it's telling us is the following, that this object is traveling at a constant speed, constant speed in the horizontal direction. So each of those periods of time is 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. So the periods of 0 0.05 are counting off across here. And that is why it doesn't matter how long these are, doesn't matter where they are, they each have the same thickness on the horizontal axis. That's just a point of interest. Okay, now what do we notice about the length of the lines here? Well, that's its velocity. Okay, that's how much the flash displaces, but it's equivalent to the velocity. That's displacement over 0 0.05 seconds. So that's you can see the velocity by just looking at the at the length of the lines. And you can see how the velocity is getting shorter, shorter, shorter towards the top. In other words, it's getting less. Another interesting point, look at this. We talked about symmetry. One, two, three, four, just about five flashes, and this would be coming down. Okay, we don't have the flashes exactly matching up, but they're one, two, three, four, approximately. If we started here, it'd be one, two, three, four, five flashes. So it takes the same length of time, same number of flashes going up, as coming down. That is again what we talk about as symmetry. Look at the length of the lines. In about, if you looked at them coming up and coming down, now if these all happen to coincide, you'd see that the length of this is approximately halfway between the length of that one and that one. In other words, if it had happened that these this one going up and this flash coming down were exactly at the same level, they'd be the same, that they'd be the same length. In other words, it's telling us the velocity going up is equal to the velocity coming down. And it, as I say, it's a bit hard to explain, but if we if this if we'd thrown this up often enough, we could have got a graph or a case where this flash was exactly matched, matched by a flash on this side. But we can see the principle that that length is approximately equal to halfway between that length and like that length. In other words, the velocity here is equal to the velocity there. So we know that just by looking at this as a photograph of it, that whatever velocity this started with, it ended with. So Look at that length there. It's halfway between that one and that one. So in other words, the velocity here and here are approximately the same. And they are actually the same. So there is a symmetry. The velocity of object going up is the same. At any point across here, the velocity going up at that point would be the same as the velocity coming down. And that we can see from that. We can also see again the symmetry going across. Now this, this shape you will have learned in maths is a parabola. And it's formed when you have something moving across at a constant velocity, but something changing all the time with a squared. So this is getting slower with a square of time. So we have a squared relationship or something that's getting very much slower as something moves constant. And then when it reaches the top here, you get very much faster again. So we have a squared relationship in the vertical axis and we have a constant relationship in the horizontal axis and there we get our parabola. So all projectiles follow a parabolic flight. Sometimes the parabola can be just a very flat one or it could be a just straight up, straight down. Now in, in our science we do not deal with what you can see here is a two-dimensional motion. Motion is always straight up, 
straight down, which makes it very much easier to understand. Originally, they intended for us to study uh, projectile motion in two dimensions, but for some reason, maybe they discovered it was just too hard. I don't know why it's hard. It seems very simple that you just add constant movement in this direction. So the object is traveling with a constant velocity in the horizontal direction, but it's, it's traveling with a change in getting slower, 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 then faster, faster, faster in the other direction, and that creates a parabolic path. So that's about all that we can say uh, from uh, about this, but I guess we could just, uh, one last thing we could look at is if this was all squashed into just going up and going down, just notice that this is our vertical velocity. Look how long it is. Getting shorter, getting shorter, getting shorter. Now, that line there looks quite long. But if you look in the vertical direction, let's just get this a little bit closer. In the vertical direction, that's actually stopped moving. It's still moving in the horizontal direction with the same average velocity. But it, look, it stopped. There's no height differential in the vertical direction. So it's this length from here to here that describes the vertical changes of velocity. So here the velocity in the vertical direction is zero. And then as we see coming down again, we see that it's getting faster, exponentially faster, 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 and so on. And always the change of velocity is going to be equal to 9,8 meters per second because we know that that is g, or the acceleration due to gravity.